Hello, welcome back to part two of our look at the urinary system. And uh, in part two, our focus is on the renal tubules. All right. And so uh, we concluded the last video with a look at the uh, basic anatomy and structure of the uh, renal corpuscle. And so this time we're going to focus on the basic structure and anatomy of the renal tubules, uh, for which we know that there are three regions of the renal tubule. Uh, the first region is what we define as being the proximal convoluted tubule. Um, we call it the proximal convoluted tubule because it is the closest to the renal corpuscle hence the name proximal, uh, convoluted because of how twisty and winding it is, tubule because, well, it is a tube. Um, and so that name kind of makes sense. Right? That name makes sense. The second segment of our renal tubules is the loop of Henle. We call it a loop uh, because it is just that. It is a loop. And that loop is made up of the descending branch because it's going down and it's made up of a ascending branch because it is heading up. And then we've got this thinner section right here, uh, which is the loop. Right, and so the descending, the loop, and the ascending segments all equal the loop of Henley. Henley because it's named after the guy that discovered it. And then the third segment of the renal tubules is this area right over here. This is what we define as being the distal convoluted tubules. Uh, distal because it is furthest from the renal corpuscle. Convoluted because it also winds and bends, tubule because it is still a tube. And so they are the three segments of the renal tubules. The collecting duct, the collecting duct, which is this guy right here, the collecting duct is not part of the renal tubules. It is not a part of the renal tubules. In fact, the collecting duct is where um, the distal convoluted tubule of multiple nephrons will merge to go ahead and um, deposit uh, the filtrate that has now passed through them. Once that filtrate moves through the collecting duct and there are last minute minor adjustments to the concentration of that filtrate, only then does it become urine. And so once it goes down through that papillary duct at the bottom of the collecting duct, then and only then do we finally uh, refer to this um, filtrate as being urine. Right? And, I, and I again want to go back and I want to stress the idea that it is the um, renal corpuscle in conjunction with the renal tubule and its three segments, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, and the distal convoluted tubule. Uh, that we define as being the nephron. Right, so that is what we define as being the nephron. 
So uh, I want to go ahead and kind of look at each of these segments um, of the renal tubule. Right? They each have their own little um, differences um, that can go ahead and differentiate them. Uh, you've seen some of those differences already uh, when we've looked at the histology. And so we know that um, the proximal convoluted tubule and the cuboidal cells that line those tubules look very different than the um, uh, cuboidal cells that make up um, the distal convoluted tubule. Right? Uh, and the, the loop of Henle looks completely different as well, and there's reasons for that, and, and we'll talk about that. So we're going to kind of go start now and, and uh, move our way through these tubules, kind of looking at their overall characteristics. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. And we'll see how far we can get in this, uh, in this session. So uh, again, this is the proximal convoluted tubule. Uh, and the job of the proximal convoluted tubule um, is uh, basically to um, reabsorb um, much of the excess water that was lost during filtrate. Right. And so again, the job of the job of the proximal convoluted tubule is to reabsorb. Um, 75% or more of the lost water during filtration. It is also within the proximal convoluted tubule where 100% of the glucose is reabsorbed. 100% of the glucose is reabsorbed uh, within the proximal convoluted tubule. Now we're going to find out um, that it's not just water and glucose that are absorbed within the proximal convoluted tubule, um, but the majority uh, of the reabsorption takes place right here in the convoluted tubule. We're also going to have vitamins and, and minerals that are going to be reabsorbed here as well. Um, and you might have some other byproducts that are, are reabsorbed. You might even reabsorb some more urea uh, or nitrogen within the proximal convoluted tubule. But the vast majority of what will be reabsorbed uh, is water and glucose and essential vitamins and minerals. Uh, and so um, that is the job of that is the job of your proximal convoluted tubule. All right, that is reabsorption. All right. uh, and it's designed for that. Uh, it's designed for reabsorption because within the lumen, right, you have um, these very fine brush borders. All right, that brush border is made up of microvilli. Right, that is then sitting on top of the brush border itself. Uh, and so if you were to look at this even closer, you would see that there would be tiny little microvilli sitting on top of the brush border lining these cuboidal cells. Right. And again, we have um, microvilli on this backside as well uh, because uh, this is where um, the capillaries... Uh, that make up the peritubule capillary bed is going to be uh, located. So remember that you've got this network of capillaries uh, that surround the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule. Uh, and again, that network of capillaries uh, is what we refer to as being the peritubule capillaries. Right. Peri meaning around, tubule means the tubes. And so these are a network of capillaries that are surrounding both the proximal and the distal convoluted tubules. And so the microvilli on uh, the apical surface, I'm sorry, on the basal surface of these cuboidal cells, 
This here would be the apical surface. Lining the lumen. This here would be the basal surface. And so that microvilli lining the basal surface is to allow for more interaction within those peritubial capillaries. Within the loop of Henle, we see a transition uh, from we see the transition from simple cuboidal uh, in the descending loop to simple squamous in the thinnest part, simple cuboidal up here. And again, in the ascending uh, branch of the loop of Henle, we go back to seeing simple cuboidal. So in the thickest regions of our loop of Henle, we have simple cuboidal. In the thinnest regions of the loop of Henle, we have simple squamous. Uh, and there is a practical reason for that once we get into a little bit more of the function, right? Once we get into a little bit more of the function, um, what I will give you a hint at is um, we have um, two processes that are happening here at the same time. Uh, you have salt reabsorption that is happening on the ascending side and you have water reabsorption that is happening on the descending side, um, as well as down here in the loop. All right, and so you've got water secretion that is happening all along this area, or water reabsorption that's happening all along this area. Uh, and then the ascending, you have salt reabsorption. We're gonna talk more about that when we get into this in um, the next PowerPoint. Right. And again, here you can see those simple squamous epithelia. Right. Uh, it is the loop, it is the loop, again, that is going to be dipping down into the medulla. Uh, in the cortical nephron, um, it's a uh, small dip into the medulla, and in the juxta medullary nephron, it's a larger dip down into the medulla. In other words, more of the loop extends down. Uh, and again, that's going to that's gonna make more sense once we get into a little bit more of the function uh, of the loop of Henle coming up in the next video. The distal convoluted tubule uh, is next on our list. Uh, and uh, we can see here Um, the distal convoluted tubule, once again, is located over here at this end. Right. Um, cuboidal epithelia, simple cuboidal epithelia, once again, is uh, the primary cell that we're going to see lining the distal convoluted tubule. Um, very few uh, microvilli, uh, and the, the cells tend to be more uh, compact, and so the, the, um, the, the nuclei tend to be more pronounced. Um, as opposed to the proximal convoluted tubules. And one of the things that we see again here is the, um, the simple uh, cuboidal cells of the distal convoluted tubule. Uh, we can see that there are fewer microvilli uh, that are present and 
The other thing I'll draw your attention to is that we also have as a function here secretion. Now secretion is very subjective so uh, what we have is uh, surrounding the proximal convoluted tubule. Right. We have our, this is a horrible drawing, I really apologize. Uh, we have our peritubule. Capillaries. Right. And that peritubule capillary that is, or capillaries that are surrounding the distal convoluted tubule will, depending on um, the chemical makeup of what is now in the blood can actually go ahead and secrete back into the distal convoluted tubule. And so when we talk about secretion, we're talking about a movement from the capillaries into the distal convoluted tubule. Whereas when we are dealing with reabsorption, we are talking about going from the distal convoluted tubule back into those peritubule capillaries. And so reabsorption is going from the distal convoluted tubule into the capillaries. Uh, and what I will say is that as of right now, again, we'll get into this a little bit more later, uh, what is driving whether or not we are doing reabsorption or whether we are doing secretion comes down to hormone regulation. And what is regulating that hormone regulation within the distal convoluted tubule is the macula densa. And so the macula densa is uh, regulating uh, the chemical composition, whether or not we need to go ahead and do reabsorption or secretion. Um, this is where antidiuretic hormone is acting. This is where our aldosterone is acting and functioning. Uh, and we're going to talk more about that and, and what's, what's really happening here. Um, a lot of what we've already talked about in the respiratory system and the digestive system is going to come back into, into play here. So um, I won't spoil all the fun yet. We'll, we'll leave that here for a few minutes. And then of course here is the collecting duct. Um, the collecting duct uh, is uh, once again made up of um, cuboidal cells. Uh, the collecting duct uh, is um, really functioning in both strata of the kidney. What do I mean by that exactly? Uh, I'm glad you asked. Hold on one second. Uh, Let's do blue. So um, this segment up here is in the cortex. But this segment down here is in uh, the medulla. And so um, whereas the proximal convoluted tubule is all in the medulla, uh, and whereas the distal convoluted tubule is all, I'm sorry, uh, whereas the proximal convoluted tubule is in the cortex, and whereas the distal convoluted tubule is in the cortex, and whereas the majority of uh, the juxta medullary nephrons are in the uh, medulla, all right, the collecting duct is split. Uh, and so what we actually see here is in the medulla, the region of the collecting duct 
down in the medulla is where we see a last ditch effort for water reabsorption. And we'll talk more about that in upcoming videos as well. But know that the primary function um, outside of urine delivery of the collecting duct is it's one last ditch effort to go ahead and um, remove water, excess water, conserve that water uh, from within the urine, depending on, again, uh, plasma concentration, um, blood pressure, and all those other factors that can go into regulating that. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and stop here. Um, this is a good place to stop. We kind of get a good idea and a good sense of what the um, overall structure of the nephron is and, and where the functions are happening. When we come back with the next video, uh, we're actually going to look at the process um, of um, filtration. All right, we're going to look at the process of filtration. Um, and then we'll also look at, uh, in the fourth video, the process of reabsorption and secretion. So they are our next two videos. Filtration gets its own video and reabsorption and secretion gets its own video. And with that said, uh, I will see you guys on the flip side.